Welcome to this presentation on Moneyball Data Analytics. We are going to use SQL and Python and also a single chart in Tableau in this analysis. My name is David Olson and I'm the SQL Data Ninja. I have a book coming out this fall that will be a college textbook called The SQL Data Ninja, A Problem Solving Approach. In this presentation, we are going to chronicle the Oakland A's usage of advanced metrics in order to evaluate players to see who gets a contract. This approach was chronicled in a book and a movie called Moneyball. So in our data set, we have several columns, and here are some of them. First, we have team. That could be the Yankees, or the Oakland A's, or the Cubs. Then we have the league, whether that's American or National League. We have an integer value for the year, and these will be from 1962 to 2012. We have runs scored in the season, runs allowed for the season, how many games a team won for the season, an on-base percentage, slugging percentage, batting average, yes or no whether they made the playoffs, so it's a zero if they did not make the playoffs and a one if they did make the playoffs. Then we have opponents on base percentage and opponents slugging percentage. The end game here is we want to find out which factors have the highest correlation with winning, whether that's batting average or slugging percentage or something else. We are going to store our data in an SQL table called Moneyball. So this is the DDL for that Moneyball table. DDL stands for Data Definition Language. The name of the table is Moneyball. And we have Team, League, Year, Run Scored, Runs Allowed, Wins, On Base Percentage, Slugging Percentage, Batting Average, and Whether or Not They Made the Playoffs. These two attributes are not given in the previous slide for a definition, but they represent the rank of the team during the regular season and the rank of the team during the playoff. G stands for games, and for a typical baseball team, that's 162 games. Here is the opponent's on-base percentage and the opponent's slugging percentage. And here is the sample data to see what it looks like. Now we don't have all the columns here, but we do see that we have a team, a year, runs scored, runs allowed, wins, and on-base percentage. Really what we want to do is to see what the most important measures are to predict wins so that teams can be successful in the regular season and in the playoffs. Our first SQL query is just going to give us the first year for which we have data. That turns out to be 1962 and the last year for which we have data. That's 2012. So we did min year as first year, max year as last year. Let's execute the query then in SQL Server. I will run this query and notice it quickly pops up with the first year and the last year for which we have data. Our next query will be calculating some basic aggregates. And those aggregates are average, sum, max, min, count. So each row of data represents a team for a year. So the average runs scored would be the average of all the rows. So it's the average number of runs a team scored in a year. Sum is a total of all the runs scored for all the years. Max is the team that scored the most runs in one year. Min is the team that scored the fewest runs in a year. And count is going to be the number of non-null entries for runs scored, which typically is the same thing as the total number of rows in the database. This is what the results look like from the basic aggregates query. 
So there's 715 runs scored average in a season. There's better than 880,000 total runs scored. The most runs ever scored in a season by a team is 1,009. The fewest runs ever scored in a season is 463. And the total number of entries, meaning rows of data, is 1,232. That is the number of non-null values, so we have 1,200 32 rows of data in this data set. Let's run that query in SQL Server. So I highlight it, I execute it, and I see the average run scored is 715 per season, per team, 880,981. A team scored 1,009 runs one season. The fewest runs scored were 463, and there are 1,200 32 entries in our data set. This query is going to find which team scored the most runs and list it for the given year. So this part of the query finds the largest run scored in the entire list and feeds it to this outer query and then we look for the team the year the run scored for those that had that maximum amount. Let's run this query in SQL Server to see that we get the same results. I'm going to highlight it, execute it, and indeed the 1999 Cleveland Indians scored 1,009 runs in the season, which was the most in a season for any team between 1962 and 2012. Conversely, here is the query that will show us the team that scored the fewest runs in a year Nobody wants to be on this list, but it turns out it was the Chicago White Sox in 1968 scoring a mere 463 runs. So the query is very similar to the last one. Instead of a max, we're looking to select the smallest run scored in the inner query. We feed that value to the outer query and then list the team, year, run scored, and gave it an alias. Let's run this query in SQL Server and make sure that we indeed get the 1968 White Sox. So we run the query, here it is, Chicago White Sox 1968, a mere 463 runs. This is a rather hard luck query and that is going to be who scored the most runs and did not make the playoffs. So we, in the inner query, look at max runs scored from Moneyball where playoffs equal to zero. And we have to put that where condition in both sides here in order to get teams that didn't make the playoffs. So we get the most runs scored, no playoffs, feed it to the outer query. And I did it that way so that I could list the team, the year, and the runs scored. Turns out the answer is the 1996 Seattle Mariners scoring 993 runs and not making the playoffs. Once again, let's run this query and confirm that we get the right answer. And again, it was 1996 Seattle Mariners scoring 993 runs and not making the playoffs. This is the opposite of a hard luck story and they are a very lucky team. This one is which team scored the fewest run and made the playoffs. Interestingly, this 1968 was the same as the team that scored the fewest runs. And it turns out that that was a very low run scoring year. In fact, after that, they lowered the mound so that the pitchers wouldn't have quite such an advantage. So again, it's very similar to the last one. We select the smallest run scored and we look for the playoffs equal to one. That means they made the playoffs. We feed that minimum value to the outer query where again, we look for the playoffs equal to one, so they made it. And the run scored is equal to what was fed to us from this subquery. Then I list the team, the year, and the run scored. Let's run this in SQL Server and notice that we did get the results that we wanted to see the team that scored the least runs and still made the playoffs. We've done a few SQL queries and now it's time to transition to Python. Python is a programming language which has 
a multitude of facilities for analyzing data. We are going to do our data a cool way in Python, and that is we're connecting Python to SQL Server. So we're going to import a library, PYO, DBC, in order to make a connection and get the data from our database. And I chose to have some variables here. Server is equal to my IP address. Database is equal to Moneyball. I'm the system administrator and there's my password. Now I'm using this right here, a PYODBC connect, and this is my connection string from here to here. And you see plus server here. Well, this is the variable that I declared here. So this connection here just looks a lot cleaner. Then in this case, I declared a cursor, and on the cursor execute is where I put my SQL query right here. Then I'm going to display it right here. So here is a variation of the previous slide, but I wanted to show using a method not including cursors. So I have imported the pandas library, and I called it pd, I've imported the facility to connect to SQL Server, which is PYO DBC, and I've imported Seaborn here, and that is going to give me some visual capabilities as I put out some charts and graphs. So instead of a cursor, I have my connection is equal to PYO DBC connect, and then I have my SQL query variable is using read SQL query. So here's the query inside, select league, year, run scored, runs allowed, and so forth. And then I put a data frame houses the results of the entire SQL query. I also added something to my data frame, and I added RD, and that's going to be a calculation run differential. So my run scored minus my runs allowed is my run differential and then I print it. Here we are then in Jupyter Notebooks writing our Python code. Here is the code. I haven't displayed the upper portion of the code because it includes my password and the IP address so you can see why I didn't display it. I run it and here is the output. Here are the early columns and here are the last five columns and so it sort of wraps around and it shows me the first five rows and then the last five rows. Remember this RD is a calculated column which is really cool that I could derive it from other columns. So this is that same output here and I just want to call attention to this run differential again. Clearly you'd like a large positive number there which would mean that a given team outscored its opponents. And so what we did with that query was we connected to SQL Server and brought in the data into Python, and here we're just listing it out. This next routine in Python is going to create a 2D scatter plot. We are using the Seaborn library, which is in the matplotlib library. This first line, we're just defining a color palette and you'll see the garish colors that I have chosen. Then we set the color palette here for our plot and here is where we define our X axis, our Y axis, so X is wins, Y is runs scored, and we're going to have different colors for teams that did or didn't make the playoffs. So here is the actual chart that yielded from that code and it's fascinating. Here's our six colors that I've defined in the palette just to show. And the blue dots represent teams that did not make the playoffs, whereas the red dots represent the teams that did make the playoffs. Now again, here on the x-axis is wins. Here is runs scored. So we find out that 99 wins is magic because only three times has a team 
won more than 99 games and still not made the playoffs. So it's all but guaranteed that if you can get to 99, you're going to make the playoffs. And there are rare instances like this one here where a team won a relatively small number of games and scored a relatively small number of runs but still made the playoffs. So here is our code in Python and we will run it. Here we see the output of the data. There is the colors that I chose. Again, the runs scored are here on the y-axis and the wins are on the x-axis. And we see the red dots over here closer to 99 or 100 wins. Here is our next Python routine which will generate a standard XY scatter plot. On our X axis, right here, we will have run differential. That's right here. On our Y axis, we're going to have wins. And so we define this to make a nice pretty XY scatter plot. Here is the output, and we notice that as a team has a more and more positive run differential, that the number of wins that that team has goes up. So we see a nice sloping line right here. Our next iteration of code here is going to be deceptive because it looks so short and easy and yet it's going to generate four different Python pair plots. Now here is run differential and here is win and we're going to see some correlations here. So here's the output and again notice here run differential is on the y-axis and here wins is on the y-axis. So we have run differential here on the x. Here it's run differential is here and wins right here. Again, just as a reminder, blue means we didn't make the playoffs, red means we did. And so we get a variety of ways of seeing that output. So here is that code in Python and I will run it and then I will scroll up to see my XY scatter plot and I see the four variations right here. Our next Python routine is going to output a Pearson correlation coefficient which measures the strength of a linear relationship between two data samples. So it's not going to say causation or indicate what's an independent or dependent variable, but it will show the strength of the relationship. Here is the code that does that. Now, this is the variable right here, core check, that we defined earlier here. And that's going to be a data frame that includes run difference, wins, and playoffs. And then we're going to apply this Pearson correlation coefficient. Here is the output. Notice when you do this that in this diagonal there's always 1.0 because run differential is perfectly correlated to run differential. Wins to wins and playoffs to playoffs. The interesting thing to see here is how run differential is so highly correlated to wins which makes a lot of sense. If you tend to score a lot more than the opponent, you're going to win a lot more games, even if you do lose some of the close ones. Let's take a look at that code in Python. Here it is, and I'm going to run it. And let's take a look here at the bottom. Here's our output, as you can see, and it gives us a correlation matrix between run differential, wins, and playoffs in Python. We can do an even larger Pearson correlation coefficient here with on base percentage, slugging percentage, batting average, run scored, and run differential. Now, we noted that run differential was highly correlated to wins, and run scored is correlated to run differential but obviously good pitching and good defense is also very important. So the Oakland A's looked and noted that everybody had always considered batting average really important for runs scored, but it turned out that batting average was valued too much 
and on-base percentage and slugging percentage were undervalued. So here's the correlation matrix, and what we really wanted to see is get that part of run scored to the highest correlation. On-base percentage here is 0 0.90. Slugging percentage, 0.91. Batting average is significantly lower, and that's 0.827. So we really want to get our run scored up. That's what baseball hitters can do. And on base percentage and slugging percentage are definitely more valuable than batting average, which defied conventional wisdom. Let's run this Python code for the correlation matrix and see the output. Here it is at the bottom, and it's the same that we had on the slide. And we, again, really wanted to look at this run scored column right here to see what's most valuable. The previous routine showed that on-base percentage and slugging percentage were undervalued. And we could delve into that further by using some machine learning techniques and some others to see exactly how undervalued they were. First thing we do is we're going to apply this function drop na which drops the missing values and then we can use routines for select the k-best class and then a chi-squared statistical test to select the best features. So I set my x value equal to my fifth column here but it really is the sixth and so you have to count over starting zero to your columns. And then I apply my select k-best class here and I end up printing my features and my best scores. Here are the results for the select K best and chi squared routines that we just did. Here are the features slugging percentage, on base percentage, and batting average. And we see the relative score to the target variable, which was run differential. And of those, slugging percentage is the most important followed by on base percentage than batting average. So let's run this in Python and show the results here at the bottom. And that's those same three scores for slugging percentage, on base percentage, and batting average. Here is the final Python routine that we're going to do. And this time we're going to create a horizontal bar chart that is going to use a tree-based classifier. That will give us a score for each feature of the data. The higher the score, the more relevant the feature is towards the output variable. So here we're using this function, extra trees classifier, which involves some level of machine learning. Here is where we have a horizontal bar chart and we're going to have an X label here of importance and a Y label of statistic. Here is the bar chart that we created with our tree-based classifier. Here is batting average and we get a score that goes from here to here. And here is slugging percentage and it is a higher score or it's more important to our output variable which was run differential. Finally, here is our last chart, the tree-based classifier bar chart. Notice when we run this code, we get the chart, and here on the y-axis is statistic. Here on the x-axis is importance. Here's batting average, here's slugging percentage. And here's the score for slugging percentage and the score for batting average with this particular algorithm. Let's make a Tableau chart from a stored procedure that we create in SQL Server. This is going to be pretty simple, but we're going to show the year and the total number of runs scored for each year. You can see that we've already run that and we've got the data right here in SQL Server. We called the stored procedure yearly runs scored and we connected to Tableau and we're going to use this for our data. Here's our sheet. So we start our chart here 
by putting year into the columns and note that it is a dimension and it's continuous. In the rows, we have a measure and continuous and that's going to be run scored. So down here you can see each of the years and you can see that there's a trend line that moves higher. It kind of comes down a little bit in 10 and 12, but more recently it's quite a bit higher. If I wanted to edit my title here, I could double click on it, give it a different color, give it a different name, click apply, click OK. If I wanted to change my Y axis here, I could just change this from run scored. If I want to change year of run scored to year, I could double click that and I could change my title right here. Let's change the formatting for run scored. I can right click on it and choose format. And here I might choose something bright, maybe garish. Go 16. Let's come over here to see what I'm doing. So we go to 16 and maybe bold and click OK. And we see that run scored now has changed. Maybe let's go back and also make it italicized. So if we're going to do that to the Y axis, let's do it to the X. So we'll right click and we choose format. And let's try to be the same on this one. So we'll go to pink. We'll go to 14 and we'll make it bold and italics okay and so there we've edited some labels and we brought our data in it's a very simple chart but it's kind of cool to see how this trend line goes of the run scored by year that's our money ball presentation and it was really fun because we used sql server we used and featured a lot of Python and we also did a simple chart in Tableau. This mirrors what happens in the real world when people use several different tools to complete their data analytics project. If you like this video please subscribe to my channel and have fun doing your data analytics.